Minimum and root altitudes, MEAs, are the lowest altitude you can fly on an airway with required obstacle clearance and signal coverage along the entire route. Most people ignore MEAs after their checkride because they assume ATC will just assign altitudes to them. You might just give them a look during pre-flight planning to come up with a cruise, but you can use them in route to strategize too. We're on an IFR flight and we've got a healthy headwind up here at 8,000 feet, slowing our ground speed down by a fair bit. That'll increase our ETA and our fuel burn. On the climb out, we realize that the winds picked up significantly as we climb through 6,000 feet, so we'd love to cruise down there or lower to take advantage. Can we do it? We're southwest bound on Victor 375 from Fluky, south of Washington, D.C. Our destination is Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's about a three-hour flight without the wind, so the ground speed penalty is really hurting us over the long haul. We chose our cruise altitude of 8,000 because that keeps us above the highest MEA on our route to Chattanooga, which is here, 6,500, and here, 7,500. Now, what's the MEA on the segment we're currently flying? It's 2,600 feet. So can we just request a descent down to 3,000 feet? Well, how long could we stay down there before higher MEAs make us go back up? After Haney, the MEA goes up to 2,800 feet, so 3,000 would still work, but when we reach the Gordonsville VOR and turn right to stay on the airway, the MEA goes up to 4,000. We really couldn't stay at 3,000 for more than a few dozen miles, but we can descend to 4,000 and stay down there for a total of about 50 or 60 miles. At this point, Roman will need to climb back up to 8,000 to comply with the 6,500 MEA and the IFR altitude convention of even thousand foot intervals when westbound. With a much lower headwind, this might be worth it. It can really save some time. So how does this work in flight? Will ATC instruct you to fly lower on these parts of the route? Likely they won't. You'll need to ask. They may come back and say that you can only stay down there for a bit, but of course you already know that since you looked at your chart, so you can tell them you'd like lower to take advantage of the lighter headwinds, and you can expect to get higher at around Roman. They may need to coordinate this with the next ATC sector along your route, if that segment at Roman belongs to another facility. But starting the process early helps. We get down to 4,000 and see a much more favorable headwind than we did up higher. As a bonus, we're also between two cloud layers, so we've got a visible reference outside. At Roman, we need to start that climb up to 8,000, and ATC should be assigning this to us. Now, we can ask for another altitude dropdown, this time after pros, where the MEA westbound becomes 5,400. We can cruise at 6, and we can stay there until reaching Stove, which we'll need to cross at 7,500, so our cruise will go back up to 8,000. We don't have to stay there long this time either, though because the MEA drops to 6,000 again after Damas, and after Taken, goes down even further to 4,000, where we can stay all the way into Chattanooga. Again, none of this happens automatically. We need to ask ATC for altitude changes, and they'll want to know what our plan is given the MEA changes in route. So we should help them out as much as possible given we've done the research. It may not always be worth it if you won't be at lower altitudes for long, or the ground speed bonus just isn't that great. But on this flight, we could avoid being up at that higher 8,000 foot altitude by as much as 350 miles of our route, which in our Cirrus, with 20 knots less headwind, can save us 20 or 30 minutes, giving us more options, which is always a vital asset in IFR flight. Want more IFR tips and mastery? Check out our full course at the link here or in the description today.